today we're reviewing the best-selling reverse osmosis system on Amazon, which also happens to be one of the most requested water filters here on our channel, the iSpring RCC7AK. As always, we're going beyond the specs and marketing claims, diving into real-world contaminant reduction and potential chemical leaching based on our lab testing. Plus, we'll cover everything else that matters, so let's find out if the iSpring RCC7AK is really worth the hype or if it's just another product riding high on Amazon reviews and clever branding. Hi, I'm Sarah from BOS Water with a review of the iSpring RCC7AK, a tank-based under the sink reverse osmosis system. As with all our water filter reviews, we've conducted professional independent lab testing to assess real world contaminant reduction and potentially detect any chemical leaching. On top of that, we'll talk about how our tap water tasted and smelled after going through the iSpring RCC7AK, how easy or difficult the system was to assemble and prime, daily usability, filter replacements, and more. Now, before we dive in, you can find our full analysis of the iSpring RCC7AK, including lab reports, in our Google Sheets. For example, this sheet compares 13 under sink reverse osmosis systems, including the newly added iSpring, and it also lists our product links and discount codes. So if you're thinking of buying and want to save a few bucks while supporting our work, be sure to check it out. Now, at the time we're filming this, iSpring hasn't fully confirmed a discount code for the RCC7AK, but if they do, we'll add it to this sheet. You'll find all the relevant links in the video description below. All right, let's get into the review. First off, the RCC7AK is a traditional tank-based under-sink RO featuring the standard filtration process for this type of water filter, meaning sediment and carbon pre and post filters plus an RO membrane. But there's one small addition, a remineralization and an alkalinization post filter. This final stage is designed to add minerals, which are stripped out by the RO process back into the water and raise the pH. Now, this might stir up some debate, but before we go any further, let's clear up a major misconception about RO water pH. A lot of people worry that RO water is too acidic, but here's the truth. RO water typically has a pH between 5.5 and 6.5, so slightly acidic, yes, but Coffee usually sits around five, orange juice around 3.5, and lemon juice as low as two. And remember, the pH scale is logarithmic, meaning orange juice is 100 to 1,000 times more acidic than RO water. And yet, no one panics about orange juice, and rightly so, unless you know you suffer from a medical condition, maybe. But also, RO water reads slightly acidic, not because it's harmful, but because it's nearly empty. With so few dissolved minerals, the water has almost no buffering capacity. That means even tiny amounts of CO2 from the surrounding air can lower the pH by forming carbonic acid. But in terms of health, this is basically irrelevant. What actually matters more is mineral content, though it's much harder to measure than pH. Now, a lot of brands play into this confusion, promoting alkaline post filters like it's some kind of health revolution, when in reality, and in our opinion, it's mostly marketing hype. Bottom line, RO water pH is secondary. What really matters is whether the post filter is adding back essential minerals. If it does that, the pH will naturally follow, but a post filter that only boosts pH and calls it a health feature, that's just branding. Now we'll get into which category the iSpring RCC7AK falls into when we review our lab results. But first, before we could collect our unfiltered and filtered water samples for testing, we had to install the system and prime the filters, a process that turned out to be pretty straightforward. The written instructions were clear and included links to instructional YouTube videos. There were even dedicated booklets for specific components like the faucet. So without going into too much detail, here's a quick rundown of the setup process. Turn off the cold water valve and install the ice spring feed water adapter. Now the system feels high quality overall, but the turn knob on the feed water adapter felt a little thinner and 
not as sturdy when compared to other systems we've tested. After drilling a hole in the counter's surface, you install the faucet by inserting it into the hole and securing into place by tightening the wing nut. The system also includes a bracket to install to a wall if you would prefer not to drill into your countertop. And after drilling a hole into your drain pipe, insert the appropriate tube into the drain saddle, then install it to the drain pipe. You install the vertical filters by entering them into their appropriate sumps and screwing those into place. And we should note that one of our filters leaked due to an oversized O-ring, but we easily fix this by replacing it with one of the included backup O-rings. You install the tank shutoff valve, followed by installation of the RO membrane. Connect all of the color-coded tubing, then turn on the cold water valve and the faucet, letting it run for 30 minutes to flush the entire system. Then shut off the faucet and let the tank fill. And once the tank is full, open the faucet to completely drain it. And after the first tank is drained, the system is ready for use. Once our system was all set up, we collected two water samples, one unfiltered and one directly from the iSpring faucet. We sent both to a lab to see how the impurity levels changed before and after filtration. Quick disclaimer, before and after lab testing isn't an exact science. There's always some margin for error. Things like cross-contamination can affect the results. We also didn't repeat the testing and only evaluated a single unit using our own tap water. So that means we could only measure the contaminants as they occur in our water supply. So think of this as like a helpful snapshot, not a final verdict. And if you found this video helpful so far, we would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. All right, so here is how the iSpring RCC7AK performed in our lab testing for contaminant reduction. It removed all detectable chlorine, disinfection byproducts, copper, barium, zinc, nitrate, and uranium. Strontium was reduced by 94%, so also a pretty strong result. Fluoride saw 78% reduction. Decent, though not the best we've seen. Some under sink RO systems we've tested did better while others performed worse. Now for the downside. Boron levels actually more than tripled in the filtered water, according to our lab reports, from 0.05 parts per million to 0.17 ppm. So a 240% increase. Now, while 0.17 ppm is below the strictest boron health guideline we could find at 0.5 ppm, it's not exactly reassuring. In addition, the lab detected vanadium at 0.02 ppm in the filtered water, and we couldn't find a health guideline for vanadium among the sources we usually reference, but apparently you shouldn't consume a whole lot. So again, not ideal in our opinion. Lastly, the lab report also listed a small amount of aluminum for the filtered water, whereas no aluminum was found in the unfiltered. However, the level detected was well below the strictest health guideline. In fact, about 20 times lower. So this one is actually not a concern to us. So all in all, the iSpring RCC 70 k delivered solid filtration results, but with some potential leaching. While not confirmed, it's something we couldn't ignore, and it did factor into our overall rating of the system. All right, this tab summarizes our remineralization results. The iSpring is the RO system on the far right, and as you can see, we highlighted the magnesium and calcium levels in the filtered water. 0.64 ppm and 7.21 ppm. When we compare that to the average levels of the six undersink RO systems we tested that don't use remineralization, the magnesium difference is minimal. However, the ice springs calcium level is noticeably higher, though still below the minimum level recommended for drinking water by the WHO. The same goes for magnesium. As for alkalinity, the ice spring water just barely reached the minimum threshold of 30 ppm. So overall, not a whole lot of minerals were added back. And yet the pH of the water came in at a very high 9.72, which perfectly illustrates what we talked about earlier in the video. A high pH doesn't necessarily mean high mineral content. But if we left it at that, we wouldn't be doing the ice spring RCC 70 k full justice. Why? Because our remineralization lab data reflects the shortest possible contact time between the water and the remineralization media, which we use to keep testing consistent across all RO systems. That said, we also ran additional tests using TDS meters and found that longer contact time, like when the system sits unused, allows more minerals to dissolve into the water. However, this only affects the water that's actually sitting inside the remineralization cartridge at that time. In other words, 
With any RO system that uses remineralization, the actual mineral content in your water depends heavily on your system design and how you use it. Based on our findings, the iSpring RCC 7AK performed similarly to the six other remineralization ROs we tested. Not significantly better or worse. Just keep in mind that even if your RO water consistently shows a pH above seven, that doesn't necessarily mean it's packed with minerals. All right, let's talk about NSF certification and any additional third-party test data that iSpring provides. The RCC7AK itself holds just one official certification, NSF standard 58 for TDS reduction. However, the RCC7AK BLK, which appears to be the same system, but with a black faucet instead of the standard silver one, comes with additional certifications. These cover reduction of asbestos, barium, cadmium, chromium-3, copper, fluoride, lead, and selenium, and with strong reduction rates. In addition, iSpring lists arsenic-5, cyst, and turbidity reduction in the performance data sheet included in the manual. What's missing entirely, though, is testing for organic compounds. But aside from that, the certifications and data look solid. And finally, taste and odor, which was perfect. Our filtered water felt clean and exactly how you'd want it. Okay, let's talk about day-to-day -day use, although there's honestly not much to say. You just open the RO faucet, which by the way, is one of the heaviest and sturdiest we've tested with a simple and modern design and dispense. In our speed test, it took about 4.5 seconds to fill an eight ounce cup, which is actually quite fast compared to the other tank-based RO systems we've reviewed. Just keep in mind that this was with a full tank and the flow rate will naturally decrease as the tank empties and loses pressure. But in our usable water test, we were able to dispense a full 2.8 gallons before the faucet slowed to a trickle. Refill Filling those 2.8 gallons took just over an hour, which should be more than enough water even for larger households. Although remember that your actual output may vary depending on your feed water pressure. Ours is typically around 70 PSI. Also worth mentioning is the included leak detection valve. Now that's a small plastic component installed on the tubing between the feed water adapter and the system typically taped to the bottom of the kitchen cabinet. If a leak occurs, the circular disc inside the detector absorbs the water, expands, and shuts off the water flow from the feed valve, effectively stopping the leak. All right, how about filter replacements? Honestly, they're not difficult at all, but since this is a more old school system where the filter cartridges and sumps are separate, there's just a bit more manual work involved compared to systems with modular snap-in filters. First, you'll need to shut off the feed water and release pressure by opening the RO faucet. Then unscrew one or more of the filter sumps, remove the used filters, insert the new ones, and screw the sumps back into place. Side note, the filter wrench you'll need for this is included in the package, which is really great. One thing we like is the clear sediment filter sump. It lets you check the condition of the cartridge without having to open anything. That said, there's no filter life indicator, so you'll need to manually keep track of when you last replaced the filters. Another minor drawback of these more traditional RO systems, they're a bit of an eyesore compared to modern units with neatly stacked enclosed filters, but to be fair, that's not a huge deal since RO systems are typically tucked away under the sink and out of sight. Now onto our final test, wastewater. We measured a pure to drain ratio of one to 1.25, meaning 1.25 gallons of water are wasted for every gallon of purified water produced. However, this was tested with the tank shut off. Under normal use, you're likely looking at closer to a one to three or even one to four ratio. So roughly four gallons wasted per one gallon of usable RO water, which is perfectly normal for this type of system. Almost done. Let's touch on third-party user feedback. Overall, it's overwhelmingly positive, especially on Amazon, where the RCC 70K has an exceptionally high number of reviews. Among the small percentage of complaints, the most common issues were leaking from the faucet, filter housings, or fittings, poor or unresponsive customer service, taste concerns, and faulty or missing parts. Cost? Well, right now the iSpring RCC 7AK is $241.99, which even if we don't get a code from iSpring, 
makes the system one of the most affordable underseeing ROs we've tested. And that price also includes a one-year limited warranty. When it comes to filter replacements, based on the average filter life of six to 12 months for the pre and post filters and two to three years for the RO membrane, we estimate annual replacement costs to be around $100 to $110, so also very affordable. And since the system uses standard size filter cartridges, you could go with off-brand replacements if you wanted, though you probably wouldn't save much because the price is already quite hard to beat. And that's it. So here's a quick summary of the iSpring RC Seed 7AK. It's a traditional under sink RO with added remineralization and alkalinization. The system feels high quality and installation is straightforward. However, one of our filters initially leaked due to an oversized O-ring and the feed water valve feels a bit flimsy. Filtration results in our lab testing were solid and on par with other under sink ROs we've tested. However, there may be potential leaching levels were below health guidelines, but still not ideal. The pH of our RO water was well into the alkaline range, but that doesn't reflect actual mineral content. To reach recommended mineral levels, you need to allow for sufficient contact time between the water and remineralization media. So performance depends heavily on usage. The system carries some NSF certifications and includes a bit of additional third-party test data, which is great. What's missing is testing for organic compound reduction. Our filtered water tasted and smelled perfectly clean. Everyday use is easy with fast faucet flow. The system also produces enough water to support larger households. Filter replacements take a little more effort compared to modern modular systems, but still manageable. We appreciate the clear sediment filter housing. However, there's no filter life indicator. In our wastewater test, we observed a typical pure to drain ratio for standard under sink ROs. Third party feedback is overwhelmingly positive and both upfront and long-term costs are highly affordable. So all in all, is the iSpring RCC 7 ak worth the marketing hype? We'd say mostly yes, especially if you are on a budget, but it's not without drawbacks. All right. Don't forget to check out our Google Sheet for the full analysis of the iSpring RCC 70 k along with the 12 other under sink RO systems we've tested, including our product links and codes, all added in the description below. We've also got plenty of other water filter comparisons here on the channel, such as our top 10 countertop RO systems. So be sure to check those out too. And as always, drop any questions or filter requests in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.